You're listening to the Audacious Church Podcast. We know this is a great investment into your life. So tune in, listen up and stay focused. For any more information, visit us online, audaciouschurch.com. Hey everybody, welcome to another Audacious Leadership Podcast. It's Paul here and also Pastor Sophia. Whoop, whoop. Welcome. Thanks for being with us, everybody. The word of the Lord for this year, as you know, for all of us is Daniel eleven thirty two. Those who know their God will be strong and do great exploits. Great exploits. And so last month's podcast, Pastor Glint and myself were talking all about this word. And today we want to go, uh, I guess, into it a little bit further, see what else God is saying or how else we can apply that word to our lives. The thing we noticed is that often when we're talking about great exploits, we kind of uh, put that in the same category as uh, lots of activity. That in order to do great things for God, it means that you've got to look busy, that you've got to have a lot of activity, that you um, don't necessarily uh, meander through life, but you're intentional and you're going for it and you're running. So exploits equals speed. That's right. Exploits equals doing a lot and doing it fast. And really in this podcast, what we wanted to explore is actually the counter... um, culture way of of life which is really what we would call embracing the slow exactly so there is a famous fable about the hare and the tortoise yes not the rabbit and the pigeon as you, <laughs> as you thought it was called <laughs> sorry guys so specific some of us didn't go to uni <laughs> <laughs> Actually, me, but there you go. Carry on. The hare and the tortoise. Go ahead. The hare and the tortoise. And uh, why don't you give us a bit of a rundown on <laughs> on what that fable um, is all about? Well, obviously, you know, there's a race, and uh, the 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 hare. Oh come up. on! The hare is is you know throwing it down. He's saying to the tortoise that I can win any race I was against going there. you. Come I was on, going we, there. The we hare- go. His bragging is like, I can beat you. I'm the fastest in this forest. I'm the forest fastest. Forest fastest. I can run faster than you. And the tortoise says, I don't know. I feel like I might. Have a chance. Be able to (laughs) beat you. (laughs) (laughs) And so all of the forest turns out because this is going to be embarrassing because the tortoise is just slow and the hare is just going to smash him. I mean, it's obvious. It's obvious. The outcome is obvious. You win races by going faster. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. But what happens, Pastor? Tell us. What happens is that they're on the starting line and the gun goes off and the hair is like a blur. He just goes for it. And the tortoise is like... Ooh. Visual illustration there, guys. If you're listening, I'll describe what's happening. <laughs> Sophia is I'm embodying. Is, is very slowly stretching her neck and looks in some way like a tortoise. <laughs> anyway, I would try it. And um, so the tortoise is going like minuscule. That's not the word. I'm going very slow. Yes, there you go. There you go. <laughs> it's going very slow, but the hare, of course, is so cocky and so confident that he's just flying around all over the place, starts doing some flips, starts you know, climbing a few trees. He's like, I don't even need to try in this race, but inevitably gets distracted, gets lost. Or even in one version of the story, I heard a rumor that he had a, a snooze. <gasps> he had a sleep. Of course. Well, why wouldn't he? Yeah, exactly. He's made loads of time and and everybody knows that uh, he's going to win. But we know that he gets so distracted, falls asleep. And the tortoise, in faithfully, the meantime, faithfully just slowly, slowly, step after step, going in the right direction, wins the race. Yeah. And I guess the, the principle, the, the, the meaning behind the story is um, what we want to talk about today. Just the power of slowness. And even saying it out loud sounds a little bit like, really, do you mean that? But um, bef- before we get into um, some of the how-tos of how you embrace a slow, I, was, I think it was worth highlighting some of the fruit of, of, of going fast. Like y- you were talking about how you know it brings tension to your life and well, all of that. Well, think about the last time that you were trying to get out of the house. If you're a parent, um, you have would have vivid 
memories of trying to get the kids out of the door and not getting late to church or not getting late to wherever it is that you're going. And, and just as you're leaving, somebody throws up or just as you're leaving, you know, um, we can't find one sock and yeah. and or the one shoe or something like that. It was one shoe or, or or one of the children don't don't want to put their coat on and you're like it's freezing outside. We got to put the coat. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden you're in a hurry and you've got to get to work or you've got to get to a certain place, and you know that it's stressful. Often voices are raised. Yeah, you know you start shouting around and where are my keys? You know I need to go and I don't you know, have time to be polite. Yeah, exactly. I've just, got to, I've just got to say it as it is because we're in a rush. You know, and then you start blaming everybody because somebody's moved your keys and didn't tell you where they put them and it just happens all the time. And then often they're in your pocket or something like or something ridiculous and then you've got to eat humble pie. But the fact is you're tense, you're stressed, you're worried about what's going to happen when you turn up late and you get in trouble or, um, you know, you start to, to lash out at the people around you and – Often, um, we just get locked into our own, our own life and our own goals, and we stop to we stop seeing people around us. Yeah. So take that out of the like late for church illustration and and think about it as a principle. The fruit of rushing is uh, impatience, insensitive, insensitivity, uh, criticism, lowered standards. You know, change the way you treat people. And if we're not careful, trying to do exploits by by just going faster and harder and doing more uh, can can go in the opposite direction. You That's actually right. start a decline of of your leadership and your you know that sort of nous that you need as a leader to be able to navigate through difficult situations. You actually need your wits about you, and when you're in a rush, you don't really have that. You you know you might charge through something say you were trying to get get out to the car back to the kids illustration you just like fly out the door knock over a plant but it's like well we've got to go i don't care that's it whereas like in life if in our leadership we're kind of like insensitively rushing through people's lives or just rushing through projects or programs that's right we go from project to project to project yeah knocking stuff over saying oh well you know sorry it's just because i'm in a rush yeah so that's that's the potential fruit of not doing this. I mean, road rage. It, it's it's all it's all there every single day. We are we are experiencing the effects of people being in a rush or people hurrying, and often you, you're not your best, and you can't do your best either. Yeah. yeah. Um. There's a whole uh. There's a whole movement called the slow movement, that is um a coming against the speed that life is going in at the moment. So everything's fast in terms of we've got our fast food, we've got our, you know, fast technology. If you go somewhere where there's slow internet, you know, it's like outrage. You know, what do you mean we don't... very dead. (laughs) What do you mean we don't have a decent Wi-Fi um, in this hotel or wherever you you happen to be? Everything is fast. Cars are fast. Um, Our... um, our lives are really, really fast. And so this slow movement is is almost responding to that and saying, no, that doesn't breed health. It doesn't breed health in your emotions. It doesn't breed health in your body. And nor is it a desirable way to live. Um, and so everything's about doing things slow. Not slow as in, you know, in slow motion, but for example, f- slow food. Slow food is about, you know, perhaps you grow your own vegetables and you don't use anything processed that is going to bring in speed. So a lot of processed foods has been brought for speed purposes. Yeah. So you don't do anything processed so that you have ev- all your ingredients are clean and um, in their original state. And when you prepare your meal, you prepare it from scratch um, which is something that most of us don't do anymore. Don't have the time. We don't have the time. So that's something like slow food. Then same thing with transportation. There's actually a, a village in uh, Spain that's a slow town. They've actually designed the whole thing so that people don't use their cars in the city center or the town center and all this kind of stuff. So here's, here's the tension. If, they, if we know God... We'll be strong and we'll do exploits, but our brain is hardwired to think that that means fast. 
yeah. and, and lots. Whereas Jesus said these words in, uh, in, in Matthew 11. He said, come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to make, uh, how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace, the famous part says. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. So God is actually asking us to walk with him. Yeah. And so we're kind of thinking, all right then, if, if the word of the Lord is great exploits, but also the words of Jesus is like, walk with me, like think, be intentional, then we have to embrace the slow. It's true. And it talks about living light and freely, which is kind of opposite to, you know, stressed and and weary and, and burdensome. So what we want for our audacious leaders is that we want you to do life well. We want you to live well, love well, and actually get to the end of whatever time God decides that you're here on the planet and have him hear, have him say those words, you know, good and, and faithful servant. Yeah. So let's do let's do two how tos, how to slow down. Yep. Uh, and then two, you know, the fruit of. Yeah. Of slowing down. Now I think that uh, it's probably going to sound like we're not saying anything different, but actually planning your diary and your week and your days and your months with. Um, the things that you value in mind. So sometimes when we're thinking projects and we're just going from project to project to project, we forget that actually our relationships are really valuable to us and they're they're part of keeping healthy emotionally, socially and um, you know, enjoying the enjoying the the journey together. So um, perhaps you can evaluate your own life right now and just say am I planning to invest in my relationships. Yeah, if if, if we were to uh, do an exercise um, where we say, okay, uh, write the three most important things in your life down. Yeah, everybody would probably say some of the same things. There would probably be five things that that we would choose from. So people would say, oh, you know, God, family, friends, my job, you know, things like that. Uh, if we then did a second list. That was, how do you know when something's really important to you? We would say, well, you spend time on it, you spend money on it, you think about it, you talk about it. If you put those two lists together, you may find that what you want to be your priority, God, family, friends, by your own measure, is not. Exactly. And so this first point on how to embrace slow is make a plan based around the things that you value. Plan your time, and not just your time, but your energy, your resource as a as a human being. Your leadership, which is not an infinite resource, it's something that you know needs replenishing and restarting through sleep and and all sorts of other things like that. So, number one, plan your time around what you value. And also, um, you might find that you need to simplify. You might need to simplify your your responsibility abilities or your tasks or whatever that you're actually doing in terms of um, contributing to society it might be a job or it might be working um, in the life of the church if you're doing too much and you're doing it all poorly then perhaps it's because you're doing too much and you need to actually simplify and ask what is it that is my priority this week Absolutely. What is it, my priority this month? And we actually talked about simplicity in a previous episode, so you can go back and listen to that if you missed it or you want a reminder, because we did a whole um, whole session about you know stripping back and simplifying and solitude and some of those spiritual disciplines. So the first one is plan your time around what you value. What that does is it enables you to do something something else. And the that second thing. this is the most important thing I think is that if you're like me, I'm always underestimating how long things are going to take me, how long it's going to take me to drive into the office, how long it's going to take me to get ready, how long it's going to take me to actually get out the door. Because what I think is getting ready and actually getting out the door are two different things, you know, because you can think I'm ready. But actually getting out the door is another 10, 15 minutes. And so I'm constantly... Maybe in your house with your hallway. (laughs) I'm constantly um, underestimating how long it takes for me to do something. So this I play a little bit of a, a game with myself. Although you might think this is not a fun game. But 
It helps me. Where's the prize in this Where's game? the prize? You know, uh, but what it does, it helps me if I am estimating how long something's going to take me, I usually add another half hour to that. So whatever I think, oh, I've got, that'll take me 20 minutes, then I'll add half an hour. Or um, if I think... Um, if you think you can be there by two, you're going to say, actually, I can be there by three. Something like that. Or if you think, um, I'm going to um, get up at six in the morning and then I'm going to, um, you know, do a half an hour of exercise and then I'm going to go straight into there and have half an hour quiet time with the Lord. Well, often something's going to get missed if you've got to get leave the house or something like by 7 or seven seven thirty. So it's just it's almost like in between two priorities, adding a little bit of margin so that you're not rushing from one priority to the other. Okay, so here's the here's the magic word. Create margin. If you come up with a plan, if you plan your time around what you value, whilst you're making that plan, create margin in the plan. You know, just as practical as just, you know, having back to back meetings for your job or maybe, you know, as a leader, you've got, you know, and so I'm going to, I'm going to just do great exploits and I'm going to go from this meeting to that meeting to the next meeting. And then I won't even be able to eat. Aren't I doing great exploits? Well, maybe um, not. (laughs) Actually, what we need to do is create some margin. Uh, And we talked about this when we, when we talked about simplify about creativity and, um, and um, solitude. We talked about, you know, the, the the best ideas come between meetings right or you know in that down moment in the waiting room or in the at the bus stop or in those moments where we just absolutely fill it because well i've got my emails on my phone so i might as well just send an email and oh i've got time to just do this and update that whereas actually if you just create some margin when you're not doing that stuff Mm. actually that's where creativity can flow what about trying that when you've got a little bit of downtime not actually reaching for the phone. Yep. But just allowing yourself um, to be present. That's one of the ways that that we can embrace the slow is actually working on being present. You'd be surprised at how much you reach for um, distraction. So you think, oh, okay, um, I've got five minutes to wait for a friend to come and meet me. In that five minutes, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my phone and I'm going to Instagram or I'm going to um, scroll and look at, th- at look at things online, maybe look at YouTube, whatever it is that, that you do, maybe play a game. But what if we didn't do that in this next season in embracing the slow and we just left the phone, <laughs> maybe put it away so you don't see it, and then just work at being present and look around and um, – acknowledge and be aware of the the sounds and the sights and just take time to breathe so we're we're basically moving now into the fruit of slowing down we said make a plan and um, create margin and what happens is uh, as a result of that is that you end up being more present Mm. in the situations that you're in just looking at the gospels and the life of jesus there's little about when he when he got somewhere but a lot about when he was on his way to somewhere. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like the miracles were like between meetings. Yeah. You know, the, the feeding of the 5,000 was after the meeting finished. Yeah. We don't know what he said, like in the meeting necessarily. It's not linked to the miracle. It's like it happens afterwards or between. And so Jesus was present. He was able to be present in the moment. Look, people, I mean, this he was a busy guy. If anyone did great exploits... I think it might have been Jesus. <laughs> I love the fact that Jesus was never in a hurry. How he just took, he knew where he was going. He knew what his mission was. And he was focused and he was resolute when it came to why he was here. But that was never a, res- a reason or an excuse to overlook somebody who needed him. He always was ready to stop. He was always ready to to engage with, you know, even people that he wasn't supposed to or socially supposed to engage with. He, nobody was ever inconvenient to him. 
Yeah, and you can I, almost hear the tension in the disciples' voices yeah. where they're like, no, come on, we've got to go eat or, you know, we've got to go to a different city because they're, they're going to try and kill you here. It's like, what do you mean you want to stop and talk to Zacchaeus? What, what are you do? like? Yeah, we're in a we're doing great exploits, Jesus. Yeah. Let's let's go, go, go. And and what and, do you mean you want to go to his house and yeah. have a meal? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and that's why, you know, can't we just give him a pen? <laughs> So the second one is is really the fruit is is that you are then interruptible. Exactly. So you're present, you you present in the moment and present in your life, enjoying your life, but also you're then interruptible. You know, people are not thinking. Well, I, they're probably too busy. So you know, being focused doesn't mean that you can't be interruptible. Totally. And as a leader, we have to be because it's not one size fits all. Not everyone is the same. Not everything comes in a convenient, you know, two hour window every other week at life group. Sometimes you need to be interrupted at a different time. And just being able to um, have the margin in your life to be able to say, you know what? Yeah, I can do that. I want to do that. It's not about being a doormat to everybody and just, you know, whatever people demand of you, giving them that. Um, I think there is there is a happy balance between being focused and being deliberate with your life, but also when somebody does need something, um, well, maybe when they need a little bit of your time, maybe it could be one of your children, maybe it could be a friend that rings up on a Saturday night and says, do you think we could um, hang out? then you're not so hurried and harried even um, to to um, stop and spend that time with that friend. Yeah. Well, I think um, I think we we need to let you guys have a conversation together. So um, remember, these podcasts really, you know, half of the job is listening to it, but it comes alive through conversation. And so um, we're going to encourage you to be together, be present in that discussion, turn your phone off, um, and really um, apply something about the accountability of of saying stuff out loud in front of other people. Absolutely. It takes it to a a new level. Remember this, that in hurry, there is no love really. Hurry... um makes us selfish and and it takes away from the life that God has for us. But love has a speed and it's slow. So go good in learning to love well as leaders and as um, family members and as friends and and we'll see you next time. See you guys. Have a great discussion. Mm-hmm.